Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create an action grunge cartoon effect in Photoshop. Now this can be applied to all of your action photography uh, from sports photography to just uh, your children running around out in the backyard. Now a couple of assumptions that I'm making right off the bat. First, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. And let's name this uh, something simple. How about uh, action? grunge cartoon effect. There we go. It's long, but it spells out exactly what we're doing. Now, one thing that's kind of important with this particular effect is that the width and height of your image needs to be uh, exactly what I'm telling you. Uh, the width needs to be 2560, the height needs to be 1440, and the reason, oh, and the resolution needs to be 150 pixels per inch. Now, the reason that that is true is because the effects uh, are specific to this uh, these dimensions. So if you have an image that's bigger than this, you should shrink it down to fit here, and if you have an image that is smaller than this, you can blow it up to be this size. All right, so 2,560 uh, 2, pixels by 1,440 pixels, a resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, background contents, it doesn't matter. You're going to be putting a picture on top of this. Uh, color profile is going to be uh, my working, which is Adobe RGB 1998, and square pixels for the pixel aspect ratio. Let's begin by hitting Create, and we're now ready to import our image. Now the photograph that you're going to use for this, the image that you want to turn into this uh, action grungy kind of cartoon effect, the only important thing that you need to know, other than filling this image size, is that the image is going to be turned into a smart object. Now there's several different ways to do this. You can just put the image in, then go over here to your layers palette, right click, and then go to uh, convert to smart object, and that, that would be fine. You can also um, go up here to file. You can go to open as smart object and open that image, that photo, as uh, a smart object, and then drag that into this file. Or you can do what I normally do, which is place embedded, which will place the image into your uh, your image file here, place the photo into your image, and it will convert it immediately into a smart object so that you have a smart object to work with. So let's use that now. We'll place the embedded. I'm gonna choose this motorcycle image, and here it is ready to be resized, and I'm holding down Shift and Alt on my keyboard will, will constrain it to its original aspect ratio, and then I can size it up so it fills the screen, and then hit Enter. And as you can see over here, it is a smart object. See, it says smart object object thumbnail. So it's already a smart object. I don't have to do anything extra and it's ready to be worked on for the effect that we want. So the first thing that we need to do after uh, your image is imported into, after your photo is imported into your image and is uh, a smart object, is we want to rename this so that we know what it is. We want to rename this as original. Did I spell that right? Original. I am having spelling issues lately. Uh, so original. So this is now our original image. And what we need to do here is we want to duplicate the original uh, smart object three times. So you want to have uh, uh, control J, J, J. So that is three new images here, original copy, original copy two, and original copy three. So the original here we can then hide. We don't need it anymore. Uh, and original copy, we want to rename this as fuzzy blur fuzzy blur, uh, and the one above that, the middle image here, we want to name crosshatch. Then above that, what we want is outline. And we're naming them this so that we know exactly what each layer is doing for the final image. So if we need to go back and tweak something, or we want to see each step that we took, we know what they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off or hide the outline and crosshatch layers and we're only going to be showing our fuzzy blur layer. Now what we have to do with fuzzy blur is we have to give it three effects. A Gaussian blur, we have to do a filter gallery sprayed strokes to it, and we've got to do a motion blur on top of that. So the first thing that we're going to do, like I said, is a Gaussian blur. So let's go up here to filter, let's go to blur, let's go to Gaussian blur. 
And we want our Gaussian blur to be a radius of 10 pixels, okay? Very simple, hit okay, we're done with that. Next thing, we're gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to filter gallery, and what we're going to do is we're going to use sprayed strokes. Now sprayed strokes can be fun found under brush strokes, under sprayed strokes there, and that's all that we're really looking for. Our stroke length needs to be at 20, and our spray radius needs to be at 25. Now the only thing that depends on the image that you're using is going to be the stroke direction. You want the stroke direction to follow the image action. For example, in this image, uh, he is making a turn and it looks like he's leaning from the upper right to the lower left of my image. So what I want is a stroke direction of right diagonal. As you can see, that gives me these lines that follow the flow of his body. Now if for example, I was looking at a, uh, a baseball pitcher who was throwing the ball and I had a straight shot of him about to throw the ball, I might want it to be uh, horizontal, which is from left to right. So that would show the action happening left to right. If, for example, something was coming in from the upper left to the uh, lower right, I would want left diagonal, like so. And if it were straight up and down, uh, like somebody in volleyball jumping up to get the ball or something, I would want it to be vertical. So it depends on the image that you're using, uh, which one of these four stroke directions that you choose. Now for me, it happens to be right diagonal, but make it work for whatever uh, image you happen to have. But remember the direction that you're using because it becomes important for the next step after this. So I'm using right diagonal, which is basically a 45 degree angle. Okay, so that's, that's the important thing to remember. This is a 45 degree angle for my uh, sprayed strokes. Hitting OK, you can see that that has affected the entire image. Next thing that we need to do is we need to do the motion blur. So you go to filter up here, you go back to blur, and then we go to motion blur. And as you can see at 45 degrees, that's the motion blur that I want for this image. It follows the flow that I chose in our sprayed strokes. If you were using vertical, you would want this to be at 90 degrees. If you were using from left to bottom right, then what you would want is to be negative 45 degrees. And if it were uh, horizontal, you would want the degrees to be zero. Whichever degree works for your image, the distance you want is going to be 15 pixels. 15 pixels works best. So let's hit OK, and we are then done with our fuzzy blur. The next thing that we need to do is work on our crosshatch. So let's make that visible, and that will hide everything underneath. Don't worry, it's coming right back. So we need to change our crosshatch layer mode up here to overlay. So let's change that to overlay. And the next thing that we need to do is change its opacity down to only 50%. We don't want it to overpower the image. Okay, then what we need to do uh, on our crosshatch layer is we need to give it the crosshatch. So we're gonna go to the filter gallery up here and we're gonna give it two filters from the filter gallery. All right, we need two. Now let's turn on uh, two images, uh, two layers here. So we've got two layers. You can do that by going down here to new effect layer. Let's hide the top layer and let's just work on the bottom layer here. So the bottom layer, we want it to be grain. So let's go down here to texture and we're gonna go right here to grain. And the grain that we want here, the intensity that we want this grain to be at is gonna be at 25. Okay, the content uh, contrast here, we want that to be at 15. And the grain type that we want is speckle uh, or sprinkles, sorry. Uh, sprinkle or speckles? We want speckle. Speckle is what we want, like so. Okay, so next thing that we wanna do is we wanna go up here to sprayed strokes. We wanna make that now hit uh, unhidden so that we can see it. Uh, and we're gonna change that to cross hatch. So cross hatch is found under brush strokes here, cross hatch. And the stroke length that we're looking for for our cross hatch is gonna be 10. Our sharpness over here is gonna be a 20, and our strength is gonna stay at one. So 10, 20, and one. And you can see we've got this really cool kind of cartoony effect. We're then gonna hit okay, and we now have our effects building up on top of each other. Now this looks pretty good, but what we want now is the outline. That's right, we wanna have an outline around this. Now I happen to like a white outline around these effects. I think it gives it a little bit more of a, uh, of a grungy, grungy kind of cut out of a magazine look. So that's the outline that I'm gonna put on, but I can also show you after I'm done uh, how you can change that into a black outline if you prefer a black outline. So let's go here to outline. Okay, we're gonna change this layer mode to screen. 
to screen like so. And we're gonna apply just one filter gallery filter. So we're gonna go up here to filter and we're gonna go to filter gallery like so. And we're not gonna use brush strokes or anything like that. What we are gonna use is glowing edges, which is under stylize. And we're gonna change to glowing edges. And we can get rid of this secondary one here by just clicking on it and then clicking on the little garbage can. So now we've got glowing edges. Okay, and what we want here is for the glowing edges to be a two. Then we want the edge brightness here to be six and the smoothness here to be five. And as you can see, that gives us this nice glowy kind of outline to our image. We then hit okay. And as you can see, we have this beautiful looking grungy action cartoon look to our new photo. So that's really all that you need to do. Now I did promise that you could turn this into a, uh, a black outline if you preferred a black outline. Now I happen to prefer the white, but if you want it to be black, the only thing that you need to do is make sure that outline here is selected and then hit control I to invert your outline. You see it's that it's turned black now. And then we need to change from screen to multiply. And we now have a black outline around our, uh, our uh, cartoony grunge action looking uh, photo. Now, if multiply makes it a little too dark for you, you can play with all of these. Uh, darker color works too. You can go with color burn to make it really uh, show. You can go with darken. Uh, another good one would be something like overlay, which will uh, get rid of most of your background and make things look cool. I mean, you can play around with this for hours to figure out exactly which one looks best to your eye. Now, like I said, I happen to prefer it to be uh, a white outline, so I'll just turn off the invert there, and I like that look of the uh, white outline around my, uh, my grungy action cartoon look. So there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do a new tutorial every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.